Hey everyone, my name is Ben Heisch, and today we're looking at the lights that I consider to be the absolute best all around light that I've ever used for wedding photography. And I know that that sounds a little bit wacky considering these aren't actually strobe lights, but there are actually a ton of reasons that I've loved using these constant lights over strobes lately. Today we are going to be diving into the Aperture 60D and 60X. kind of background and disclosures. The modifiers that I'm showing in this video have all been purchased by me. Aperture did not send me them. Aperture did send me the 60X just because I'd been talking about how much I was interested in that. And they just sent it over out of the uh, goodness of their hearts. And I'm very thankful because I've been able to use it and check it out. But I didn't have to make a video. I don't have to make a video or anything about it. And then Pergear actually reached out to me asking if I wanted to review the 60D. And since I was already planning on making a video about the 60X, I said, oh, sure. Like, that would be nice to have both of them and try out. So thanks to Pergear for sending over the 60D. And then for some background for anyone that doesn't actually follow this channel on a regular basis, I've been a wedding photographer for almost 15 years now. And one of the things that I have sort of from the get go decided was that there's a lot of moments during a wedding that I feel like are just too important for me to be using a strobe. If maybe someone's walking down the aisle or someone's having a you know close moment with a family member or something like that, and then I just see like flash, 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 flash. But the times that I've gone to a wedding and seen that kind of stuff, it's just taken me out of that moment because there's been something distracting. So for years now, I've been trying to find a good solution. I've gone through a ton of different lights. And one of the lights I actually did land on as a great option is the Amaran 60D and 60X, which you can check out the video I did on those up here. And those are legitimately fantastic lights. I have zero issues with anybody using them and I could definitely use them as well. They also come in at about half the price of either one of these lights. So obviously there's gonna be reasons why you might wanna pick up one of those over one of these. But I will say that these LightStorm 60X and 60D lights have a few specific functions within them that are very, very handy and essentially make it the kind of like ultimate light to bring to weddings. Now we'll start off with one of the more kind of like obvious points here. The 60X is bicolor, meaning that it can go from 2700 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. So you can see that it's actually a little bit more blue even than the 60D here. And then the 60D is a daylight balanced light as the D implies there. And while you don't have the color differences, you definitely have a lot more output. So I believe the 60X at kind of like full spot comes in at 30,000 lux and the 60D will come in at 50,000 lux. So it's definitely significantly brighter. And for sort of comparison as well, the 60X currently is at 10% brightness and the 60D is at 1% brightness. And they are, you know, fairly similar right now. That being said, I'm normally using these mostly for reception times when the sun's already down and I'm going to use them to sort of accentuate the light that is already happening at a wedding. And so the times that I've used these, even the 60X, I haven't used it past even 20%. So that definitely makes a huge difference there where I'm not going to need to bump it all the way up to 100. This is sort of the all-in-one package that gives me basically everything that I would need without need to buy a bunch of extra accessories or anything. Now you might think, you're gonna use constant lights, isn't that gonna be distracting? It's not gonna be distracting if you are using them at just as a simple little bit of kind of like filler ambiance kind of stuff. And if you put the light in a position and use the barn doors to shape the light away from, you know, just blaring onto someone's reception table or something like that. So I honestly find that being able to use these lights is helping the viewing experience of a guest and not distracting from it, I'm actually adding to the overall look of the event. So we have the barn doors, but then we actually have the ability to focus the lights. And you can see as I move it, you can see the fixture actually move itself. And what that's doing as it moves back is it is spotting the lights, 
which can do a couple different things. First of all, you can throw the light a lot farther, but then also you can move the beam angle from being a really, really wide to condensing it down. So if you did want to, let's say, instead of just filling a scene and flooding a scene with light, you wanted to just spot it on someone that's speaking, or you wanted to accentuate the use of the barn doors by sticking it back further in reception, using the barn doors to shape the light, but then also pushing it further. I find that particular thing to be very, very useful in just dialing in exactly where I want the light to be and exactly where I don't want the light to be. Now, one of the other things that's great is that you have an interchangeable little mount thing here. So obviously you can take the little barn doors off here. And then Aperture actually sells this little um, LS60 softbox, which again, I purchased with my own money. And you're able to just toss it straight into this little slot. And then you got yourself a nice softbox. It definitely is something that allows me to take the very bright output of a light like this and then just toss it into here and make some fairly flattering light for even group portraits. But then obviously uh, this isn't exactly the spot to set this up, but it also comes with a, <laughs> but also comes with a little Bowens mount adapter here that again slides into these little spaces. And then you're able to mount much larger soft boxes and the nice thing is the yoke of this is very solid. The build quality is fantastic. And so you can use a much, much larger softbox if you would like to. I just don't physically have the space uh, to do this right now. And then the other nice thing that just kind of makes this a total win for me is that it comes with both a DTAP cable, which I don't have, you know, like V-mount batteries in that way, but it comes with this little NPF style battery plate, which you can buy these batteries super cheap on Amazon. And so on the yoke itself, you just have this little V-mount adapter. And then while this is a very large set of batteries and you definitely don't need to use them, they were just the ones that I had closest to me, you're able to toss this on a light stand and have quite a lot of power. It actually says that right now, I mean, we're at 1% on this light, which again, is still very, very bright. Uh, and we have, you know, more than two hours available. So if we turn this thing up to 100% and you can actually see it bouncing off my wall and giving me even more fill light here, at 100% with these two batteries, it's saying that I can run this light for an hour and 33 minutes, which for this amount of <laughs> output, I feel like is pretty darn good. Now, in case you want to see what that beam angle actually looks like, we are at full spot right here, and then we're going to move it to kind of full flood. So you can see it's a pretty significant difference between the two and you know we're two feet away from the backdrop here so it's going to be a lot different but you can definitely see where you can really kind of pinpoint the lights and then especially if you start using the barn doors so obviously you can start you know shaping it to very very specific little places and you can't cut it into like super thin lines or anything like that but you can definitely you know put the light where you want it to be the other nice thing is I, I don't necessarily love having to use apps for things, but I will say the Citus Link app that uh, Aperture does with all their lights works really, really well, and it's pretty instantaneous. You can see all of these lights are kind of working in series. If I wanna use them all together and move both my key light and these lights together, but then you can also go into each light individually and move them up or down. So the nice thing is you can kind of just stand in the middle of the room, open up the app and adjust the lighting and everything like that to look exactly how you want it from your phone. Again, the phone is not my favorite thing, but it's definitely preferable to, you know, standing there and turning it physically. So between the two lights, they kind of function a little bit differently depending on your use case. The 60D is a daylight balanced light. So, you know, if you're using it for normal, like talking head things like this or as an accent light, stuff like that. Or if you just want that cleaner light and you want to contrast maybe the ambient light like this with a more daylight balanced light to make everything even seem warmer in that way, that's one thing you can do, which is one of the things that makes the 60X nice because you're just able to change the lights itself from the different color temperatures. Both are absolutely fantastic lights. And again, if you have the budget for them, 
they are definitely the best lights that I've ever used. And honestly, for my particular kind of use case for weddings, for both video and for photo, they are kind of like the best all-in-one package. They have enough light output for the way that I use them. While they aren't crazy small, they are definitely small enough to put in a bag and bring with you. They are built like tanks, all metal. I have zero issues with the build quality. I feel like I could drop these and they would be fine. The fact that they have these small barn doors included, and then especially the ability to kind of zoom in and out the lights and go from spot to flood, all that kind of stuff. I just honestly find them to be the kind of ultimate lights. And while you can pack other lights that are smaller, these just kind of have every feature built into them. And honestly, the only downside I can see at all, other than just being a little bit more expensive than some other options, is just that the size and weight is a little bit more prohibitive than some other options. But then again, you don't have to bring reflectors or anything like that. You have it kind of all in one package. And so depending on how you pack, it might not be that big a deal. So thanks so much for watching. If you are interested in either of these lights, I will definitely put links in the description down below. Obviously, thanks to Aperture for sending me this and for Pergear for sending me these. I am a massive fan of both and again, couldn't recommend them highly enough. Again, if you are interested in maybe getting into the world of constant lights and want something that's a little bit more inexpensive and a little bit smaller, the Amaran video you can check out right here. You can subscribe right here if you haven't already. And I will see you all on the next one.